entire uh, UNESCO World Heritage consists of 111 sites in six different countries. All our sites are underwater sites. And you can imagine that's not so easy mm -hmm. to make them accessible for tourists. So from the beginning on, um, the local tourist organizations came to us and asked for an offer, a fixed offer a package what they could use. But actually, that's not what we want to do. We think that it's very important that we can work together with locals, that we can inspire them to get in contact with their own heritage and to put in and bring in their own ideas. So the first project we did was in 2013. It was um, the installation of three information pavilions in Upper Austria. These have been situated or still are situated in Seewalchen in Attersee, both at Lake Attersee and one at Lake Mondsee in Mondsee. So the knowledge content of all those pavilions based on each other. Yeah, and all have one general information about the topic. But all of them have a different focus too, so that people get inspired to travel around. The focus in Sivalchen is on people themselves in the settlement. The focus in Atasi is why they uh, made this settlement on the lake shore, yeah, and how that influenced the landscape. And the third one in Mondsee is on the mm -hmm. research itself. And on duckouts is that there is a local tradition. They had very long, for a very long time, duckouts. They used it or built it till in the 1960s, and uh, they have three in their coat of arms. So tourists should go around, should should uh, take care of their own heritage too. The people, the local people, should that. And <laughs> recently, we found out that it's good when people develop their own thinking and their own access, the local people to put in their own content, but it would be better if they would do that together with us. <laughs> yes, actually, uh, on two of the pavilions, now we had uh, new parts of it developed completely without us. These are official presentations of the World Heritage, and that's a bit complicated as we are responsible for that. So, we will be aware of that in future for future projects and of course in this case we will find a solution that for the future for also uh, the pavilions it will not happen but for the next project we do that is an underwater project in upper austria there we will make that right from the beginning make sure that uh, the content is at least adjusted with us and this underwater presentations planned now in the lake attersee consist also on three different spots um, and the content and also <laughs> the way how to present it is, uh, has been uh, talked through a lot with local divers as the needs they have we need to take into account if we want to give them an offer that's useful for them and hopefully something they can enjoy. Plant now is a very simple pile drilling underwater which has some information boards on it and it's a field of piles with some object, 3D objects, in little showcases. Uh, the number of these files will be, of course, 111, if that's the number of sites we do have. And uh, we also will have a group of statues. And the last project is one in Carinthia. There it has been a long time to develop uh, their own way how to do that. Um, might be due to a uh, financial crisis um, in that little stage. So now, finally, we get in move, and there, is an, there has been an architect's competition, and that had been, the, the winner was a project with several places of, um, of interest, with um, um, several hundred meters, with little bridges, as we have in here, and also with some um, some like information pavilions. So what we learned from all of this to build bridges with the communities, it's important to develop this tourist program bottom up, yeah, together with them. But it should also be clear that we have our own interests and we should have to take care of them. Thank you.